starting off with the first game mode, which is pretty much the most casual game mode and maybe one of the more classical ones. This is the team deathmatch game mode. Team deathmatch is basically two teams fighting each other off. The aim is to get 100 kills. Uh, you basically have to kill 100 enemies during the round. Uh, now, player numbers on this game mode do vary depending on what server you're on, which is pretty much the case for most of uh, the game modes, uh, except the squad deathmatch and the squad rush. Uh, but basically, in team deathmatch, you're not allowed to use any sort of vehicle. In fact, you don't get them at all. It's basically a run and gun sort of game mode where you uh, have to keep your senses alert. You have to look around every single corner because there are random spawn points and you have to be very careful about that knife kill. Uh, so don't get knifed, keep your eyes and ears peeled uh, for any sort of weird action in Team Deathmatch because it's definitely a very fast paced game mode, very casual, uh, but you know, it's uh, still fun to play. Next up is the Squad Deathmatch game mode, which is similar to the Team Deathmatch game mode in that it is... Uh, you know, a set number of kills that you have to reach before your opponents. The difference here is that Squad Deathmatch is set to 16 total players. So it's four squads of four uh, players each. Basically, you have to run around and gun down your opponents uh, before they gun you down. And since it's four squads fighting each other without any one of them belonging to a certain team, it's sort of like a free-for-all, and you sort of have to watch your back and be able to hold the spot on the map and try to protect it from different angles and it can be very fun. Uh, in squad deathmatch you do get one type of vehicle which is the infantry fighting vehicle or IFV. Uh, the infantry fighting vehicle is obviously excellent for fighting infantry. Um, it can be taken out with you know your regular engineer kit, an RPG missile or a, a, an SMAW, but um, Controlling it can secure the victory for that round because you can get so many kills if you've got an engineer on it. So, squad deathmatch is definitely a more competitive version of uh, team deathmatch. It's uh, more about how you play with your squad as opposed to how you play alone. So, it's, it's a more team game than the team deathmatch, which is a little bit more individual. Uh, so, it's still a lot of fun and it's still very intense, so you should definitely check it out and try to play it. Alright, moving on to the third game mode, which is my personal favorite, it is Rush. Now, Rush is a little bit more objective-based than Team Deathmatch and Squad Deathmatch, because what you have to do as an attacker and defender is um, attack and defend uh, a certain uh, MCOM station, respectively. So, basically, as an attacker, you start off with an A and a B site that you have to go up to, hold the E button down, and arm these objectives. When you do that, uh, and if the defender doesn't succeed in disarming the bomb by doing pretty much the same thing, going up to it and holding E, then you will destroy that MCOM station. Now, if you destroy A and B, you'll move on to a next pair of A and B, and then another one, and then another one. So basically, you have four different parts to each rush map. If you succeed in destroying the first pair, you move on to the second, and then the third, and then finally the fourth. If you destroy the last pair of MCOM stations as an attacker, you obviously win. As a defender, what you have to do is twofold. The first of these two points is one, to be able to disarm the MCOM station at any time that your opponent successfully manages to arm it, so you gotta keep it clear at all times. And two, you have to try to get your uh, opponent's tickets down to zero from 75. Every time there is a jump in part, the tickets reset, and so the defenders have to kill 75 more. So. For the defender, you can either opt to, you know, sit on your bomb site and sort of wait for them to plant it and then kill them and disarm, or you could just try to pick them off uh, one by one to bring their tickets down to zero. Um, a little note about um, Rush that some people may not know is that if you start defusing at the last millisecond, the game will actually extend the timer and see if you can pull off the defuse. And if you do, you won't lose the MCOM station. Moving on to the vehicles in Rush, uh, you can play Rush on all maps, similar to all game modes, um, uh, but uh, depending on the map you get different vehicles. So if you play on a map like Operation Metro, you don't get any vehicles actually, but if you play on a map like Operation Firestorm, you get a bunch of vehicles like tanks, attacking helicopters, and some jets. And since we're all a little bit horny now about vehicles, since we talked a little bit about them in Rush, let's go ahead and look at the game mode that actually takes vehicles to their maximum potential. This is the Conquest game mode, one of the most iconized game modes in Battlefield 3. In Conquest, 
what you do is you've got a bunch of flag points that you've got to get on and cap capturing these flag points allows your teammates to spawn on these flag points and when they do you can get quicker access to other flag points and you can also get access to vehicles that spawn on those flag points there are two given modes of conquest the first one is the regular and the second one is the large large conquest gives you five flags in total while regular conquests give you four everything else about the games is exactly the same Obviously, uh, when you look at a map in large and then you look at it in regular, there will be one missing flag, um, but that's all good. Uh, large does accompany more players and uh, it can be a little bit more hectic. In both Conquest game modes, the whole point of the game is to get your opponent's tickets down to zero. Each team starts with 299 tickets and each spawn counts for one ticket. So when you die and you respawn again, you effectively just had your team lose tickets. So everybody go ahead and clap for the noob who died and lost the ticket for the team. Good job, man. Good job. The second way of losing tickets is by flag control. Now, if you control three or more flags on any conquest map, be it large or regular, you start having your opponent's tickets slowly bleed away. So there is a very strategic element here in that you have to use the vehicles that the game provides you. You have to maintain air support. You have your players in the air and your players in the ground need to be able to tag vehicles for each other. They need to be able to work together. And I know sometimes it's a little bit difficult because you know you can't really communicate with them verbally, but it's pretty much straightforward. I mean, a, a tank crew needs to be able to move in onto an objective, secure it, while the air crew uh, presents them with the proper air support so that they don't get shot or, you know, attacking helicopters don't mess up their day. So, Conquest is a very intricate game mode. It's a very hectic game mode. You can do so much in it, and it's definitely very fun to go in there with like eight or ten friends and all play together and be on one team and try to do the objectives together. Uh, at the end of the day, Conquest is, as I said earlier, the iconized game mode of Battlefield 3. And finally, the most competitive game mode, and that is the Squad Rush game mode. Now, we talked about Rush, we talked about uh, MCOM stations and a level being split up into four parts, but Squad Rush is a little different. Instead of pairing 32 or 16 players against each other, it actually pairs two squads against each other. So you're talking about 4v4 here. Very small, very tight matches occur in Squad Rush. Uh, the way it works is that an attacker has to blow up one MCOM station at a time instead of two, and the map is split into two parts instead of four. So while the MCOM station numbers are less, you can expect the attacker and the defender team to be a very closely knit, organized platoon that that can perform in uh, you know that can perform as a team. They're not going to be a bunch of individuals. They, they're uh, some of them might be very skilled, but their key winning card is going to be the fact that they can work together as a team. Now obviously in all of the game modes, working together as a team with your squad member, working together with a team with the other squads is obviously essential to winning, but in squad deathmatch it just steps it up a little bit more because you have to be able to communicate to your teammates, you have to be call out your enemy locations, you have to have certain tactics at certain maps to allow you to hold uh, you know, different areas of that map. Uh, so I'm very interested to see how the competitive scene is going to start forming, and I foresee that uh, game modes like Squad Rush and Squad Deathmatch are going to be uh, probably the most competitive game modes uh, when it comes to clans or platoons, uh, because those game modes are going to offer you the most intense uh, experience on Battlefield 3. In Squad Deathmatch, uh, we talked about you getting an IFV, but in Squad Rush, you get nothing you and the other squad and your guns and that's it so very intense very 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 cold uh, sort of uh, Battlefield 3 experience with the squad rush but it is also a very intense one so the more competitive gamer is obviously going to enjoy it a little bit more and with that guys this video is going to come to an end we talked about the different game modes in Battlefield 3 uh, I tried to give you my best my opinions my views on the game modes I have been playing Battlefield 3 for a long time, uh, since 1942 actually, so I feel that I've got some good stuff to hopefully share with you guys, and I hope that you uh, enjoyed the video and enjoyed the advice. There will be more videos about Battlefield 3 
in the future, but unfortunately, your gamer dudester time has run out. You only paid for 10 minutes uh, by subscribing to BF3 Blog or just by generally being here, so in order to get more gamer dudester, your bills are to hit that yellow subscribe button, hit that like button, and hit that favorite button, and share the good old love. I have left a link to actually my channel down below, and I do a bunch of more things. I do funny gameplays, and I do uh, walkthroughs and stuff like that, so... I hope you guys enjoyed the video. Be sure to leave comments. I will try to answer all your comments. And uh, be sure to stick around because the next video in the series is going to be about the classes in Battlefield 3. I'm going to be talking about the different classes and how you can optimize your game towards that certain class. So take it easy, guys, and I'll see you next time.